Ireland, a little country with a rich history and one of the most breathtaking places on earth. In this nation of seekers and storytellers, adventure is just around the corner, if you know where to look. Sean Smith is one of Ireland's most exciting chefs with a passion for fresh ingredients. Legend has it, he'll only cook it if he's shaking the hand of the guy who's caught it. When George Tracy's not saving lives with the Dublin Fire Brigade, you'll find him hunting, gathering, and living off the land. He's a man with a special set of skills. In this brand new show, our two fearless foragers will travel the length and breadth of this bountiful island to meet the produce pioneers who are catching, growing, and brewing some of the greatest food on the planet. And when they've found what they're looking for, they'll create some unforgettable dishes. This is Find It, Cook It. In this episode, we're rocking up to the Rebel County to find out why cork cheese is so world-renowned. The lads will be visiting Ireland's only buffalo farm, as well as some of the finest cheese and meat producers on this beautiful island. As always, the challenge will be to combine everything they find into a cracking dish. You don't want to miss this. First stop is McCroom Farm, where the Lynch family started milking buffalo and making mozzarella here in 2009. The neighbours thought they'd gone mad, but they've never looked back. So how do you find the buffalo compared to, say, our Frisian cows? Uh, well, they're a lot smarter. They've figured out fairly fast how to open gates with their horns and their tongues. Um, any chance they get, then they'll run down to the river and they'll try and go for a swim if they can. So we have to put locks on all the gates around the place um, just to make sure they won't get out. Cute enough? Yeah, very smart, yeah. They seem pretty tame. Yeah, they're very quiet, yeah. There's some of them there, you could even hop up on top of them. Really? Yeah. Go on, show us. Okay. Well, could you? Yeah. Are they approachable, yeah? Uh, most of them. Right. Giddy up. Right, we're adding Buffalo Rider to George's job description. The herd produces about 10,000 litres of milk every week, all under the watchful eye of farm manager Thomas Meehan. The fact I love animals always has got me up in the morning, but what's the really thing here that's cool to see is that I finish milking at 9 o'clock and that cheese has gone at 2 o'clock some days or 3 o'clock. And that is nice to see the whole cycle happening within 24 hours. It's nice to be part of that. Good man, Sean. In you go. Just be careful where you stick that on. My favourite would be 951 and she's just a pet. And every time I go into the field and I walk into the field, she'll wait at the corner for me, come talk to me, say hello, then go off in her jolly way. Okay, I'm very good. He really loves those buffaloes. Milking over for the day, the lads meet resident cheesemaker, Sean Ferry. Hi, Sean, how are you doing? Hi, thanks for having us. No You're problem. responsible for the, the, the product from the milk? Yes, I am, yeah. Um, the cheesemaker? Allegedly, I'm. Um, yeah, I've been sort of involved the last um, nine, ten years with the with the um, the buffalo. Right. Um, been making cheese for 35 years in total. So, yeah, I've done it once or twice. As you can see, uh, how it's sort of it's got it's got layers upon layers, and that's what the stretching does. Um, and you have to get the, uh, the the right acidity before you add the hot water. Otherwise, you don't get a very good stretch. It would make mozzarella, but it would be a lot tougher and firmer. Um, the way it was now, you want it to be quite delicate, and you, you, you st it's, st it's still, as you can see, it's still fairly milky. And here we are, we've got some Greek style cheese here. Yeah. Which okay. is, um, again, nice and clean, uh, clean tasting. Starting to get a little bit crumbly now as uh, the, fl as the flavour develops. Kind of like a feta, is it? It's a similar type cheese, yeah. It's, 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 it's like a feta, but um, it's called, we have to call it Greek style cheese. Okay. But it's very similar. Perfect. Wow. Some mm. taste of it. Yeah, it's nice and fresh, nice and clean. Our adventurers set off on the cork cheese trail again, riding bikes, not buffaloes, unfortunately. Now, that would have been funny. Next stop is Cooley Farm to meet Dickie Williams, the Don of Cheese. His family have been making award-winning Gouda here for decades. This guy's a legend. So, Dickie. Hello, Sean. How are you? Thanks for having us down there. Yeah? Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much for calling now. It's nice to have you. So, can you tell us a bit about your cheese or what you do here? Uh, basically, we've been doing this for about, I, I reckon we started this in 1980. My mum started it. Right. Uh, we couldn't get Gouda cheese in Ireland. So, she fought, made a little kit. She got a little kit from Holland with a little book. Started making like a pound at the time, which is like a half kilo. Worked out really well. People liked it. And here we are, kind of 30, 30 odd years later, you know. And it's from cow's milk, yeah? It's from cow's milk, yeah. Only okay. cow's milk. We make one variety and we try to make every cheese that we make for maturing. So what we do is we tend to work them a little bit drier than what a regular Gouda would be. Right. Um, and then we mature them on and after like six, seven, eight weeks, 
we get them uh, tested first of all to make sure that everything is okay inside the cheese and we also grade the cheese then so we decide what customers certain cheeses go to and whether they can stay for like eight months 12 months 18 months 24 months on whatever you where, know, does, so where does that milk come from is that local milk? Uh, milk comes from one local supplier and uh, we've been dealing with him for good 15, 20 years I'd say at this stage. And do you long, think the area time. that you're in makes the milk special? Well, I mean the cows are grazed on mountains, so I suppose it does have an impact on the, on the flavours of the cheese, you know, it would have, yeah. Right. And what have you got here? Uh, three varieties, this is basically a young cheese that was made in October or September last year. So that's a bit softer than the, the mature cheese would be of course. And as they mature they dry in and they get harder. They also kind of, they lose the, the creaminess, goes a little bit and they get a bit sweeter. Uh, texture is very different. I'll give you a taste of all of them if you like. Like, how does it compare to even to some of the, the Netherlands stuff? I, I don't know. I just I got an email actually two days ago from a guy called Miles. No more information besides that. He said it's hard to believe. He says that I found the best goat in the world in County Cork. Well. So I mean that's great. You know, it's lovely to hear those things anyway because yeah. we, we work hard at it when we're when we're producing it seven days a week. It's full on. You know. You know you've, so. you've won quite a lot of awards, and this year you've you've got three under your belt. Yeah, uh, last year I think the Artesian uh, Artesian Cheese Awards in the UK. Uh, we have done over the years, yeah, we've been very lucky really, you know, probably good quality product as yeah. well, maybe. It's, it's amazing, yeah. 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 That's good. It's easy. Mm. Gooded up to the gills, the lads roll on. Sean heads further west searching for something to pair with that creamy cheese. He knows there's only one man to see and that's Fingal Ferguson of Gooby and Artisan Foods. We're smaller producers, we have a lot of farmers that rear pigs for us. We don't try and bang one drop particularly loud, we're just trying to make a very honest product. It's no. kind of always been about flavour, it's been, but also about being a bit unique, being a bit different, you know, having a bit of madness. The golden rule has always been, you either make a large amount of food and, and sell it for a good price and kind of move a lot of food, or you make a very small amount of a very, you know, kind of interesting, fascinating kind of product that kind of speaks for itself. This room here is part of the process of fermenting the salamis. What we do is we do all the butchering on Monday, we kind of get the, the meat and the fat ratios right, we mince them down, we add the spices and the, the, the cultures. The cultures are like adding yeast to bread. Basically our lactic cultures multiply when they get the heat, the warmth, and they have the moisture in the meat, and, and what will happen is that heat and the moisture will, will trigger the multiplication of the bacteria. These lactic cultures, as they're multiplying, create the familiar flavors, they change the acidity of the meat, and they kind of bind it together. The aging process plays a huge role in, in flavor and, and preserving. So if you have the French producing wines, they all have the same grape, but they're all producing very different wine. One faces south, one faces a different direction, somebody has different processes or techniques, and they're turning the same grape into very different wine. We have milk from West Cork. There's the salt in the air, we have our particular breeds of cows. This milk is some of the best in the world. Producing that into the cheese, what we have is we have stainless steel vats, some people have copper. The amount and the little things that we do that are different help make our cheese different. Unique. And unique and I think that's something that's kind of beautiful about the whole process. There's something for everybody. So Pinko, <laughs> nice to finally meet you. Thanks for having us. Oh, thanks for coming all this way. This is great. <laughs> Thank you very it much. Really <laughs> Thank goodness. Someone take that meat away from him. There'll be nothing left for the end of the show. Meanwhile George braves the weather to visit Jane and the O'Callaghan family at Loggerville House Hotel and Distillery. Thank you so much for well, thanks allowing for coming us into here. Your, your I house. know we've had a very busy day and fit us in your place. We're delighted to have you, all right? Yeah. Well, the house is maybe 300 years old. Yeah. And you came here in 1963. And it was always a private house okay. up to about 1967. Then we're supposed to have a ghost here, but I've never seen this ghost. But I, I've stayed in this house on my own and I have absolutely no fear here. Yeah. It's a friendly house, it's a kind house. It's got a nice energy about it. Yeah. You can feel yeah, that, yeah, when you come yeah. in. Yeah, and we're supposed to have this young lady who plays tennis in the corridors, but I haven't met her. But, um, not yet anyway. Yeah. <laughs> still time, maybe, you know. I believe you had a vineyard on the estate for some time. Yeah, we had a vineyard. That was the first one before, that was pre the cider. We had a vineyard. We were going to make Irish wine, white wine. Michael uh, thought, my late husband Michael thought that he could, um, he could grow wine. And he tried very hard, but oh, it, did, well, it didn't work, it didn't work. The weather, every year there was a problem. So then he started apples. Apples are easy to grow. They're safer, grow in the rain. safer bet. Yeah, they're safer bet. And we do our apple brandy. And that we Yes, we're have? not allowed to use the Calvados name. Okay. It's really it's really Calvados, but um, made from apples. Yeah. Um, and they do that in Normandy. 
but we're not allowed to use that word. Okay. With the cosy fire crackling away, it's time to have a sip of the good stuff. Rupert looks after Lagerville beverages and after a little taste, George is keen to meet the legendary distiller, Dan Duggan. So Dan, I believe a happy birthday is in order. Yeah. 74 years yesterday. I was only 74 yesterday. And you spent 30 of them distilling in this yeah, well, distillery here. We started in the smaller one up the yard and as the after the pool, we had to get big up, so that's probably, that's probably what we have. So you've been here since the start? I have, the answer. Yeah, I, I start to work here on um, 41 years next month. Right? Would it be right in saying this was the old traditional way of doing things? The slow, slow and steady was the way to go. Small yeah. batches. Yeah. You kind of concentrate on quality over quantity. Yeah, people have been bought me that I should be very good at making poteen. Yeah. I never made poteen, so okay. I believe it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, after a couple more drinks and a good night's sleep, the lads head for home. So, George, what do you think of Cork? It's a fantastic place, isn't it? Great uh, people, yeah? Yeah, McCroom is good. Brilliant, brilliant. So listen, let's uh, cut to the chase here, and we'll make it quick, right? So, all the produce that we've got, we're gonna do something very, very simple. These guys spend loads of time producing this stuff, and I don't think we, it doesn't need for me to be cooking much with it. So I kind of, we do some kind of a charcuterie kind of a, yeah. Type feel. Let you know? the ingredients speak for themselves. Yeah, um, I, I, Mr. Ferguson. I went to see Fingal Ferguson there, and we got some uh, peppered uh, salami. Yeah, chorizos. We've got goo bean. We have uh, Dickie Williams uh, with the coulier cheese. The three different types. I got some olives there. Kind of a charcuterie, Mediterranean, kind of a um, summery kind of a feel to it. These guys are producing great, great produce. Yeah. We don't need to do much with it. So, um, George, come on. Can you open that up for me? Of course, can chef. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay these out here, cut them really, really thin. And what we'll do is we'll do a bit of extra, yeah? Would you like a knife there, George? Well, thank you, George. So the idea of these croutons, George, is we do them as thin as we can. You can do them on a slicing machine. Uh, we're going to toss them in olive oil. And we're just going to put them in the oven. And we'll do a bit extra so we can tie it in with uh, the kind of a charcuterie platter. We got this cheese down from a crew. From a cream, yeah. The buffalo nice set up there, yeah. Yeah. Did you like the? Did you like your time on the bull? <laughs> it's good, all right. It was very. Uh, it was a bold, a bold move taking some uh, buffaloes in from Italy. Yeah, yeah. Through the old Very know, interesting, right? yeah. And they're nice, actually. Yeah, I think they've a herd of 350 strong there. No, I was a bit uh, nervous there with our milking thing was going on. Did you ever milk before? No. Uh, so we look olive oil, a bit of um, salt, George. Just whack them in the oven there. Yeah? We just Christmas days off. Yeah. So what's this sourdough? Sour sourdough baguettes, croutons. Well, it's the, it's the they work kind of well with the cheese. Mm -hmm. So uh, here, crack some pepper in there. Well, there's some well done. And uh, create some of this in. This is really simple. So what's the trick to that? Is it you, you got some salt, you got some citrus going on? Yeah. So like it, acid, salt, uh, and yeah. Fat. So it's a uh, lime or lemon to kind of um, cut the fattiness of it. The salt, because it's quite, not bland, yeah. but it's kind of a neutral flavour. So it can take a lot of flavour. It can take a lot of flavour. So the pepper works well in, so you get a little bit of hotness. Yeah. The olive oil's got this kind of sweetness. And there's a couple left on there. And then the lemon cuts it. The lemon cuts it. So you could leave them in there for uh, two, one, two days. Just to marinate them? Yeah, and you can put some, uh, some basil into it as well. Kind of an Italian feel to it, you know? Yeah, lovely. So the second thing is uh, Fingal stuff, yeah? So this is all the smoked meats from Gabin. Smoked meats from Gabin. Smoked meats and cheeses. Dicky was down in Coulee, so his parents came over from Holland. They came all over from Holland. And uh, they had a, they were missing home, I think, so they started to make some cheese yeah. with some kind of traditional Dutch methods. And he um, and he just ran with it. Yeah. And he's done a roaring success now, isn't he? Yeah, brilliant. What we can do is we can put all on a nice board. Yep. And uh, we put some croutons, we put the bread up. And it's kind of a taste of cork on a plate, yeah. So George, do you want to have a look at the croutons? Lovely. Go ahead, them, chef. Another minute. Yeah, no, I think they're ready. Lovely. So what's the gig here? If, if somebody wants to do this at home, just get you're getting an assortment of salamis. Assortment of salamis. And yeah. the more you don't want to be afraid of the fat. That's no, good. no, fat's good here. Fat's flavour. Yeah. Fat's flavour and all that. So there's one. So we got our meats, and then you're getting a bit of toasty bread. Just to we give have it a bit of toasty bread, and we have the the mozzarella. And we'll we'll cut up the good bean and the coulier. Kind of um, lay it out like that. We have some of the thinner stuff that you slice. Do you serve up these in the restaurant? 
Uh, yeah, more. It's more in the summertime that this is kind of um. It's an outdoor thing, glass yeah. of wine. Yeah, glass of wine. Alberino. I got some olives there as well. Put almonds, garlic. I think this food's able to stand up to the best food in the world. I mean, look at this. Taste this, so. Oh, it tastes good. It's gorgeous. You can you can really smell the smokiness of the of the oh. oak and the beach coming through. Yeah. So this is the Dickie's uh, cheese here. This is the one with the the cumin in it. Yeah, right they, bring, they stand they stand up on their own. They don't need anything. It's just important to get a bit of selection, is it? To well, this is charcuterie, yeah. The flavor party in the milk. Hashtag George's flavor party. It's great, isn't it? Where's this one? This is good beans. This is good beans, yeah. This Fingles one. Take the mo mozzarella. Yes, yeah, we're on the cream buffalo mozzarella. Yeah, yeah. It smells great, isn't it? Yeah. Just, you really get the citrus and the basil together. Would have never thought of putting those two together. Yeah. No, it's quite a, quite a classic, to be honest. I don't think it needs anything really other than this. This is core for me. And I, I, I actually wouldn't cook anything. No, no, just I? leave it, exactly, yeah. Like this is head. something you could whip up and bring, have a picnic. And you don't have to be a chef to cook this. Nice one, lads. Pour a drink and get stuck into that incredible chatrerie board, fresh from County Cork. Next time on Find It, Cook It, it's Destination Waterford, as Sean goes midnight baking and George forages for unusual food along the coast. As always, they'll be combining everything they find into a cracking dish. See you next time.